Hello, and today I'm going to be talking about adiabatic heating and cooling. And this means the direct relationship between air temperature and the amount of water that the air can actually hold. So the best way to explain this is by showing you a demonstration of what happens to a pocket of air if it goes up and down in elevation. So what we're going to do is go to four different stations, if you will, and see what happens to their temperature, their humidity, and how that relates to their elevation. So important things to know before we start is the DAR, otherwise known as the dry adiabatic rate. This is a rate of um, how much the temperature is going to change when the air is dry, otherwise known as when the air hasn't reached 100% humidity. So this rate is 10 degrees per Celsius, 10 degrees Celsius per 1,000 meters, sorry. Um, I also find it useful to use 1 degree Celsius per 100 meters. The other important thing to know is the MAR, the moist adiabatic rate, which is 6 degrees Celsius per 1,000 meters. It's important to know this one too because this is the one that you use when your rate has hit the 100% humidity mark. It's also important to know the 0.6 degrees Celsius per 100 meters. Both of these are important to know. The reason why is because a lot of the times you're not making 1,000 meter jumps, you're making 100 meter jumps, maybe. Next thing you need to know is the maximum specific humidity or maximum saturation versus temperature in the atmosphere. My chart is projected here. Um, this is pretty standard. It's a exponential equation. Um, so while there is an actual chart um, graph that gives you your numbers, not very easy to read. Um, so I like this form better and it gives you your numbers pretty good. If you have to figure out something that's not on the chart, it's actually pretty easy. And the way you do that is by taking the change in the maximum specific humidity and dividing it by the change in the temperature. So say we had a change between zero and five degrees that we needed to find, say like three degrees. Well, you take the change in 3.5 to 5, and then you would divide that by 5. And then you would have what the change is per degree. So then you can figure out what each one in that 0 to 5 range is. So that's important to know because a lot of the times you're not going to be landing on 0, 5, 10, 15. All right, so let's dive right in, shall we? So, our first station is San Francisco. I named two of these stations, and then the other two I didn't name because I couldn't find towns with the exact numbers I wanted. <clears throat> so, San Francisco has an elevation of 16 meters on average. Um, the temperature that I chose is a reasonable 10 degrees Celsius. We don't have a specific humidity yet. That's something that we have to calculate. I did give us a relative humidity. I gave us 90%. Um, and we don't have a uh, H2O lost since the last station because this is our first station. But this is something that you might see on a handout given out to you in class. So to figure out your specific humidity, you need to figure out what is the maximum amount that the air can hold at that temperature. At 10 degrees Celsius, the maximum amount that the air can hold is 7 grams. Now multiply 7 times 90%, so 0.9, and you'll get 6.3 grams per kg. So that's the actual amount that the air is holding at that time period. Whoops. Doo -doo -boo. I know, I changed my size on the pen. Whoops. All right, 
So now we need to figure out what our station number two is going to be. So as you recall, our temperature at the last station was 10 degrees. So we're going to go from, apparently that thing's really sensitive, sorry. Our old temp was 10 degrees, okay? Our old elevation was 16 meters. Our former specific humidity was 6.3 grams per kilogram. Oops. And then we had a 90% relative humidity. So to figure out our new one, we have to figure out what our new temperature is. So what is our jump in elevation? We went from 16 meters to 266. So that's a jump of 250 meters. Now, recall how I said it's one degree per 100 meters. So we have two full degrees and then we have 50 more meters left. So we have half of a degree. So we're going to lose 2.5 degrees Celsius. That's going to give us 7.5 degrees Celsius. Now our chart doesn't have 7.5, but what it does have is 5 and 10. So what we're going to do is this, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. At 5, it can hold 5. At 10, it can hold 7. So take your change in maximum specific humidity, which is 2 in this case, divide it by your degrees, which is 5 in this case. So, once you have that number, add it on, or subtract it, depending on which way you're coming on your uh, numbers, to figure out what these degrees are. Well, what the degree um, relationship is. So, we have Eight. I wrote a little large. Five point four, five point eight, six point two, and six point six. Okay, so at seven point five, which is going to be here, it's actually six. So if we take our 6 as our max, well, look at that. We actually have more than 6 from our last station, which means we've hit 100% specific humidity, which means we're going to lose some water here. So we're going to lose 0.3 grams per kg. Okay? <clears throat> So if we move on to our next one, what is our change in elevation this time? Well, our last one had an elevation of 266. It had a temperature of 7.5. It had a specific humidity of 6 grams per kg. It had a relative humidity that was 100%. And we had lost 0.3 three grams since the last station. It's not important for this next station though. So, <clears throat> what is our change in elevation this time? Thousand meters, right? Which means we can use the MAR, remember? Which is six degrees Celsius per thousand meters. So we're going to lose six degrees. So we get one point five degrees Celsius. Pretty easy number, right? All right. <clears throat> so at one point five degrees Celsius, what can the air hold? Again, we're going to have to do some calculations. So zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Maybe having arrows will actually make me, you know, 
not mess up my list this time. So we have a 3.5 here, we have a 5 here. <clears throat> now I'm notorious for accidentally messing up small numbers. So I will be using a calculator to double check my answers as we are going. Um, so we have a change of 1.5 for 5 degrees, which means a 0.3 change. So we have 3.8 here. Um, oh, geez. Um, 4.1, 4 4.4, 4 4.7. Sorry, small brain fart. So, at 1.5 degrees, we're between these two spots. Okay? So if I add, if I do it properly in the calculator first, and 3.5, eight and 4.1 together and then divide it by two. We get 3.95. So I'm just gonna call it four for simplicity's sake. Your teachers are probably gonna let you do the same. Um, but otherwise that'd be a really nasty number to try and figure out later. So four grams per kg. And we're still at 100% humidity. How many grams did we lose? Two. Okay. On to our last station. We have 1,266 for our last elevation. Our last temperature was 1.5 degrees Celsius. Our last specific humidity was four grams and our last relative humidity was 100 percent so what does that mean for us here we're going down in elevation that means that we're going to be actually getting warmer so we're going to be using the dar this time not the mar so our dar is 10 degrees <laughs> Sorry. Not quite used to this pun yet. Per thousand meters. But our change in elevation is only let's see here. Seven hundred? Yeah. Seven hundred meters. So we need to use a different calculation. We need to use the one degree per 100 meters. So if we have 700 meters difference, then we're going to have a seven degree difference. Yeah? Agree with me? <clears throat> so 1.5 plus 7 is 8.5 degrees Celsius. So at 8.5, what are we going to have? Well, luckily we have most of that chart already figured out. So at 9, it's 6.6. .6, at 8, it's 6.2. So between those two, it's going to be 6.4. So if we have a specific humidity of four grams, which isn't gonna change, you can't, you're not gonna add any unless you run into another pocket. Four divided by 6.4 equals 62.5, so you just call that 63% and you wouldn't have lost any H2O. And that's how you do these sorts of labs. They're actually relatively simple once you figure out how to use your charts and how to figure out the relationships between them. But please, if you have any questions, feel free to message me in the comments. 
I will answer them to the best of my abilities. But I'm not going to do your homework for you guys. So have fun, and I hope you I helped.